Hello YouTube. <clears throat> so as you can see, I'm in the shop and today is going to be kind of an interesting thing. It's something that I've never, never done before. Um, I've been a part of doing some at the old shop, um, but I'm going to build a new chassis for the tea bucket. I have an idea of how it's supposed to go. I mean, it's, it's essentially a puzzle. You cut your pieces, you weld them together, you make sure everything's level and all that. Luckily, T-Bucket, easiest thing in the world you can build a chassis for, because it's like six pieces. Um, I'm not putting in motor mounts and all that stuff yet. I'm just zapping together the actual frame rails and the fronts. Um, so the first thing we're gonna start off by doing is, this is mothball. You saw the first drive in it. Um, we actually went to another race after that. We got the car aligned, we did some things to it. Um, got it as good as we could possibly get it. It was way out on the alignment, was part of the reason that it was doing the crazy death wobble thing. Um, went to the race um, with Carolina push rods. It was awesome, beautiful day. All of the family was there. Um, by far the slowest car in the open wheel class by like several seconds. I mean, I'm in the same class as Zane and you, you guys have seen Zane's car. Thing's a monster. They like, dude should be hella proud of it. Um, his car runs 540s, my car, up until this day, fastest it had ever run was a 12. So that gives you an idea. Um, got there the Friday night, tested, and we got one pass. It was a 960 something. I was over the moon. I was like, holy cow, this is incredible. The car works. We're not going to die. Actually raced my buddy Adam from Anderson. He beat me that night. Didn't care because my car worked. I didn't die. So, Saturday morning, get up, we get down there. Um, my buddy John from the shop, he he went with us and helped me tune on the car some. And uh, he's actually the guy that helped me align it. And I'll put some pictures of that in as we go. Um, but we got there, got it working. Um, first pass of, of the day on Saturday was an 899. Awesome, I'm super happy with that. We gained, you know, half a second, a little over half a second. Second qualifying pass was an 875. That's the one that they used to actually qualify me for the for the race. Um, again, I'm still two and a half seconds behind everybody. Um, there was me, a little Fiat Topolino, awesome car, really cool group of guys that were running it. Zane, then a, a, a front engine dragster that Zane has run a million times. Um, also a 530 car, has been as fast as 490s. I mean, it's it's no joke. Um, anyway, uh, raced the Fiat, both of us red lighted. He actually went before I did, so I got the win on that one. Um, by run, Zane and the front engine ran each other. Zane lost. Uh, they ran again. Um, Zane lost again on a whole shot. He actually outran the dude, but was ridiculous. They were both just absolutely flying. Um, but on the second pass, guy lost all the air pressure in his rear tires and couldn't continue. Zane couldn't buy back into the finals. Mothball is now a championship car. And... <laughs> All on on by runs, which is ridiculous. Um, that's Elroy. That's our trophy. Uh, Jeff Elam is the guy that actually built it. He did an incredible job. My son Kip was all about it. He's like, I want the robot man, and it worked out. We ended up getting the robot man. But had some guys come and help me out on the car. Got it down to the point of the fastest pass was eight twenty five. And there's probably still more in the motor, but the chassis, I'm not willing to risk going any faster. Um, so that's, that's where this comes in. 
we're gonna build us a new frame and we've actually got another motor getting put together by someone else that it's, it's gonna be insane so let me go ahead and take some measurements and then we'll we'll go from there All right, so I've done some measuring on the car currently to see like what, what kind of setup we've got, what our distances are, how everything is. Um, gonna change a couple of things. Um, my chassis now is a narrowing chassis, but it only kicks in right at the end, so that's kind of kind of weird. Um, I have an entirely new front end on the way. Um, Shout out Ron Pope out in Kodak, Tennessee, uh, up there next to Surveyorville and Pigeon Forge. Um, he basically has done tea buckets for the last, I don't, I don't know, 100 years. Um, he's actually the guy that had almost all the parts for Zane's car. He built Zane's frame. He did a bunch of the stuff like that. Um, he's putting together an entire front end for me with calipers and everything to actually have front brakes. And as you know, Mothball does not have front brakes and it's terrifying. It makes it a lot of fun in the burnout, but that's about as far as we got. Um, so I'm gonna turn you around here and, and let you check this out so you can kind of see where we're at. Okay, so these are plans for an actual, um, a narrowed frame and all of this doesn't necessarily matter. It's more what we're looking at is what I've done in the black. Okay, so this is the T-bucket as it sits currently. As you can see, that's where the, the narrow is. And it's 23 and a quarter inches. We're gonna kind of eliminate that and just keep it a square chassis. So we're gonna have 27 and three quarter in the back as well as the front. Um, we have overall, it's a 103 inch wheelbase, which is not incredibly short. It is a little bit shorter than Zane's, but that's, that's gonna be just fine. Um, and kind of ignore some of my things like that. I was trying to see if I had enough steel or if I didn't, but it turns out that I'm going to. So we're gonna have two 93 inch pieces, which be our main runners. Okay, so that's these. And then this little second secondary piece, the kick up, I mean nine and three quarters. So we've got that there. And I have another, another drawing um, over here that I was kind of basing my, my stuff off of. Um, now this is obviously, it's a setup with a V8 Chevy with a 350 turbo trans. We're not putting any of our brackets on there yet because we don't know exactly how it's going to lay out. So this is all kind of, kind of rough estimate stuff. Um, then you see you have 10 and three eighths back here or for a track frame, it says 18 and three eighths. So the way it's going to work out is I'm going to cut, you know, one, so one, two, three. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm gonna cut one, two, three, four pieces, then five, six, and then these last two pieces right here are gonna be my, the very last ones I cut. And in doing that, it's gonna allow me to have a 13 and three quarter inch tail fin there. So that's gonna, gonna work out pretty good, I believe. And that kind of gives us a happy medium in between the two as far as the the street chassis and the the track chassis um i don't think i'm gonna have a uh a rear shock setup because i mean if you see on mothball it's it's hardtail zane's car is hardtail there's really no need to have a suspension in the type of racing that i'm doing back there i mean yes it would allow for some uh some added tunability but it's also one more thing and i mean if, if zane's car hasn't proven that a hardtail can work i don't know what to tell you i mean he's running consistent 540s and never having any trouble really um so we're gonna go ahead and, and lay our steel out and go ahead and try to cut our first first piece we'll go ahead and cut the 93s out and then that way we can go from there um and this right here is actually even got our degrees of what we need to do um, on on those there. So that'll be pretty.
pretty awesome. But anyway, let me go ahead and get everything set up. All right, first frame, frame rail is done. Now I'm using it as a, a hold up for the other side. Got it marked off and measured 93 inches dead on. So we're gonna make this cut and then we are, I mean, we're pretty seriously into this thing now, but let's make our cut and move on. <clears throat> All right, so we've got our first four pieces cut two main rails and our two little kick ups back there. So far, so good. Everything's going incredible. Um, I've been trying to be incredibly studious and go through and check and check and check and check all my measurements. And so far everything is, I mean, as close as I can get it on a knot level floor and with borrowed saw and all of that. But like I said, so far, so good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I guess the next thing I need to do, since I've still got a, a uh, an angle on there, is go ahead and cut our um, long sections for the, the kickback, um, the little wing. And those pieces we decided were going to be 13 and three quarter inches. So we'll go ahead and cut those and that'll give us one complete frame rail um at that point i mean really and truly we could go ahead and tack it together and kind of see where we're at and then go ahead and cut our two our front and our rear and have that and then in the words of words of rabbit god help me i've got a race car so we'll uh We'll see where it goes from here, but so far, so good. All right, so we got our pieces cut. All of them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tack these together. Not like all four pieces, just one and two and then one and two. Um, I'm gonna leave the end caps off for right now. So I'm gonna just have two straight frame rails. Um, I haven't decided on whether or not to go with the end caps on the front of the chassis or in the middle, if that makes sense. If I do it in the middle with the current length, it'll be a little bit wider than I'd like to go. And so I'm not really gonna, probably not gonna do that, but I, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll see. Um, wider is probably stabler or more stable, if that, however you say it. I don't know. Either way, I'm gonna put the camera down Go ahead and tack this up and uh, we'll just kind of see how it works out. I don't know what kind of, no, that's not gonna work. That's terrible. Let's see. How about that though? Let's check that out. There's one. Ah. Uh. 
っていう。